hear these words from Matthew 24 to 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor the servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, nor hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Here ends the word. There are so many platitudes that are used about faith and Christianity that just drive me crazy. You know, like when people say, oh, if you just want to know how to live your life right, you just read the Bible. It's all in there. Everything we need is in the Bible. Right, Pastor? They haven't read this text, have they? You know, if we would just go back to being a Christian nation, like we were at the beginning, if we were just a Christian nation, we'd all get along and everything would be okay. Right, Pastor? So things are always said by people who have never read the Bible and don't get it. But they think they get it. So they try to make that connection with me. It's like why I never tell anybody, I shouldn't say never, but I don't like telling anybody I'm a pastor. Because as soon as they find out every other word out of their mouth is Christian and they're just connecting with me. And I'm like, you don't have a clue. <laughs> Jesus says to his crowd, if you think... For one second, I came to bring peace. You got that all wrong. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. I am going to put father against son, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Oh, yeah, Jesus, like, that's really hard to do. I am going to take children and put them against each other. And we all are like, where did this come from? You know, and even when we talk about our society today, we talk about we're so divided. How did we get here? It's never been like this before. And then like, oh, so you didn't learn about the Civil War when you were in school? I think we were kind of divided back then. I think that's what caused that a little bit. And like when that war was over, like all that went away. So that's why my cousins from Kentucky still call me a Yankee. I mean... We've, we've never been this divided before. Oh. 
Think about that for a minute. Really? Never? Let's talk about family reunions. What are the things you don't like to talk about at family reunions? Oh, don't bring up politics. Uncle Bill is here. Oh my gosh, my brother-in-law got going on, you know, X, Y, Z. Oh my gosh, I had to leave the room. I couldn't stand it anymore. But we've never been this divided. See, the thing is, look at all the issues out there in our world. I'm not talking just for us here, but in our world. And how we interpret scripture and yeah, if we are following the Jesus that you know, we hear in scripture, then I think we're gonna be divided. Because the Jesus that I know and the Jesus that I listen to keeps telling me over and over again that you need to take care of the poor and the orphan and the outcast. And yet, I hear about all this legislation that's gonna take away all the things that are for the poor and the orphan and the outcast. You know, we have that, still have that pull yourself up by your bootstrap mentality. But some people don't have bootstraps to pull on. If you think I came to bring peace, then you haven't been paying very good attention. Because if you're going to follow me, you're going to make sure that things are in place that the least of these will be taken care of. And if you hear your politicians saying they're gonna take away those things and you still vote them in, you're not paying attention to me. And yeah, we're gonna be divided. Because I didn't come to make you comfortable. I didn't come just to make you happy-go-lucky. And I didn't come with a prosperity gospel. I came with passion and compassion for those who especially are in need. Jesus never really envisioned, I don't believe, the church as we know it. He envisioned people coming together, studying scripture, which for him would have been the First Testament. And he envisioned people saying, wow, you know, this is telling us we need to care about other people. Maybe we should go out and do that. You know, and that's the hard thing. I don't care where I've served, what interim I've been doing, or whether it's a call position, whatever, wherever I've served, there's always those couple of people in church where we say, you know what we need to do? We need to take care of our own. What's with all this world mission? We've got people right here that we need to be taken care of. And so I say, yeah, I know that one family that just moved in down there. I hear they're in need. Maybe we should help them out. Oh, them? Do you know them? Do you know what they do with their money? You know where I saw them the other day? They were at the bar. Yeah, them. That's the ones. Okay, so you don't want to take care of them. You don't want to take care of our own. Okay, then let's do something overseas. Oh, no, 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 no. We got to take care of our own first. But you don't want to. Oh, I get it now. You, you don't want to take care of anybody. Jesus takes us out of our comfort zone. And it's when we get out of our comfort zone that we are possibly opened up to do the necessary ministry and mission to which we are called. But if we come here on any given Sunday morning so that we can hear a nice message and we can be comforted, then maybe we're not coming here for the right reason. Maybe we should be asking first to be challenged, to be pushed a little bit, to be encouraged, but to think to think outside the box. Where am I being called? Who am I being called to serve? What are we being called to do? Who are we being called to be in this community and beyond? 
And if we think that's going to bring peace, we're a little bit misguided. How long have these divisions been going on? Do you remember the one story? What was that called? The story of uh, Cain and Abel. How did that end up? Anytime you bring people together, two, three, doesn't matter how many, a hundred, a thousand, people are going to have different ideas. And those ideas are going to clash. We need to expect that. So it's not about whether or not we're going to disagree. It's not about whether or not we're going to have different opinions. It's about how we're going to work together to do what's best for the whole. But when we can't let go of our opinion because it's right, that's when we're in trouble. And the thing is, most of us here, I would say, we come here because we believe. We believe that Jesus has called us into a mission and into a ministry to be a people, to be a congregation that is physically present in this place, in this community, and present in this world in so many different ways. And you know what? There are people out there who will never step foot in this church because we welcome, in their minds, the wrong people. And we don't need to lose sleep over that. We need to lose sleep when we stop doing the mission and ministry to which we've been called because we're afraid what somebody else is going to think. Leave their mind alone. We need to be who we are, disciples of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we're going to get testy. Sometimes we're going to offend somebody. Sometimes we're going to fight amongst ourselves. But can we come back to the gospel and understand it in a way that says to us, eh, Jesus warned us this was going to happen. <laughs> now what are we going to do about it? Now where are we going to go? How are we going to make our way through this muddled mess that we've come into? There's a lot going on in our world. There's a lot of dysfunction. And sometimes all you have to do is look in the mirror to see where that dysfunction's coming from. And we're not going to solve all of it in our lifetime. But can we leave our area of the earth a little bit better off because we were here? Can we leave someone we encounter on the street a little bit better off because we acknowledged them and saw them for who they are without judgment? And can we have enough of a backbone and enough, of, a deep enough of a well of faith that when the divisions come and they're face to face with us, we can still carry on with our mission and our ministry. Because the one we're going to listen to is Jesus the Christ. Not Uncle Bill or our brother-in-law, our cousin Jamie, but Jesus Christ. And if those clash, and they may, so be it. We still stay the course so that we can honestly and fully refer to ourselves as Christian. Amen.